All right, guys, welcome to your 25th video. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about handling the form and checking if the user made any errors. But before I do, I just want to mention one little quick thing, and that is I went ahead and I created the footer already. Now, eventually, when we make our website, the footer is going to be things like terms of use and frequently asked questions, and I don't know, maybe website information, and probably a link to all the developers' names. But right now, just to, you know, have something in there, I added three links, and of course, the code for the footer is I included that right under the form. And I also made this little uh, footer code right here in the HTML codes.php file. So I know I didn't, you know, take you guys through this, and that is because this isn't the footer that we're actually going to use. I just wanted to make something real quick. But in case you guys were looking, you're like, what the heck is this? You know, I thought I ought to mention it. So now that we have the form created, what we need to do now is we actually need to handle it. Now, by handling a form, let's think for a second what we need to do with that information. What we need to do is the very first thing we need to do is check for errors. Make sure that they entered a valid username instead of a bunch of dollar signs. Make sure they entered a valid email instead of just the number, you know, 69 or something stupid. We need to validate that they entered the correct information. And then once we confirm that they did, what we're going to do is we're going to test to make sure no other us users has that username or no other user has signed up with that email. If they did, then we say, hey, dude, someone already has this username or someone already has the email. But if they didn't and the username is still available, then we go ahead and register them for the website. Simple enough? Good. So in order to go ahead and handle the form information, we just go ahead and make an if statement. Now what I want to do is I want to check basically did they submit the form. So in order to do that, go ahead and type is set and this is basically how you do it. Post submit. Now you have to spell submit right. It's key. And what this is going to do is basically see if they hit the submit button. And if they did, what do we want to happen? Well, the very first thing we want to do is we want to create an array called error. And this is how you create. Wow, I'm like. Do I have like sausage fingers or something tonight? I'm hitting every wrong button possible on my keyboard. So basically we're creating an empty array called errors. Now what this array is going to be responsible for is storing all of the errors. Now at the end of our script, what's going to happen is any error message that we store in here, for example, um, username is already taken or your email address is invalid we're just going to output to them so hopefully if things go smoothly this array is still going to be empty at the end which means that they didn't make any mistakes but just in case that's where we're going to store them now i'm going to go ahead and pretty much write username email and password because just for uh, validating purposes it's going to be easy to see with the comment so I'm gonna validate each of these inputs one by one so the very first thing we need to do is we need to test if the username is empty so go ahead and there's a built-in function called empty where we can pass it in a variable now since our form used post we can just go ahead and steal that and the first one was username so if username is empty, then what we want to do is, of course, this would generate an error. You can't have nothing for a username. So in order to add something to that array, go ahead and type the name of the array, which is error, and set it equal to please enter a username. So that, of course, would generate an error message. Now, the next thing we want to test for is else if. Else if, what we're going to check for is we want to make sure that the username they entered, if it isn't empty, we want to make sure it only consists of letters and numbers. Now, um, the good thing is there is already a built in function in CSS, ctype underscore alnum. And what this function does is you basically pass it in a variable, this baby right here, and if this variable, which would be their username, only consists of letters, which would be alpha 
and numbers, which would be num, then it's going to go ahead and return true. So if their username only consists of letters and numbers, then let's go ahead and set username equal to post username. So what I'm trying to say is this is the bit of code that I want to happen. That's hopefully the goal. If, wow, I think I just messed something up. Else, the last thing we're going to need to check for is if this didn't test positive and this didn't test positive, then we can only have, then that can only mean one thing that what they did is they didn't have a blank username, they indeed did fill it out, but it wasn't letters and numbers. So what I'm going to do is, if this is the case, then we just need to alert them that, hey, username must be letters and numbers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Username must consist of letters and numbers only. Pretty cool, eh? So basically, one last time, and I want to repeat this because I'm going to be running through email and password rather quickly, and I don't want to stress this again, so I'm going to uh, stress it right now. We first test if the username is empty. If it is, then we give them an error message. If it's not, then we want to test if it's only letters and numbers. Now, hopefully, that's the case, and we set this username variable equal to something. But if it's not, then we just go ahead and say, hey, dude, you must only use letters and numbers only. That's our rule.